and thank you for tuning in to worship online. For some of you, this will be the first time that you can experience worship with St. James in your pajamas or your leisure clothes with your feet up and a favorite beverage. This may be a new normal for a while, although I do look forward to the time when we can all be back together again. Yet for now, we are one in spirit. I'm grateful for our technical team of volunteers for enabling online worship and JC providing his laptop that is videotaping this and uh, our production is bound to get better in the weeks that come. Today we welcome our special guest, Reverend Debbie Johnson, as our worship leader and preacher. Reverend Debbie comes highly recommended from members of this congregation and she served as the Faith Formation and Leadership Development Personnel for Hamilton Conference of the United Church of Canada. And from 2008 until just this past fall when she retired, uh, officially she's uh, been at North Bramley United Church as the Minister for Congregational Life. So, Debbie, thank you so much for being here and for leading worship with us. We appreciate you sharing your gifts. I also want to thank JC for music ministry this morning, and Bill Price is going to be singing our hymns, and Andrew Paley is on our sound system. And so thank you for being here. Just uh, one announcement about something else happening and available online and through Skype. This Tuesday is our Lenten study group, and we're going to be watching a video called Life, Love, and What Matters. So a chance to look at our priorities. We'll be providing a link to that video online, as well as some reflection questions. Or if you'd like to be part of a small discussion group from wherever you are, Karen Forgrave will be setting up a Skype conversation. And finally, for our St. James members and friends, please know that you are free to call me if you want to chat or if you need a listening ear or if there is any way that I can be supportive of you, please know that I am here for you. Now we are ready for worship. And if you have your liturgy, then please feel free to sing along with the hymns and join in the prayers as we worship God together. Our worship begins with normally greeting our neighbor and then comes with this hymn that we'll now sing together, Bless Be the Tie That Binds. Bless be the tie that binds our God's in Christian love, the unity of heart and mind is like to the Christ inspires us. We walk in the light of Christ's life. And our call to worship. The Lord is our shepherd. When we feel lost and alone, and the world seems a scary place, you restore our souls. Even when we walk through the darkest valleys, you are with us. We are never alone. And our opening hymn, number 371 in Voices United, Open My Eyes That I May See. Yeah. 
let me free. Silently now I wait for thee, ready, my God, thy will to see. Open my eyes in open Spirit divine. Open my ears that I may hear voices of truth ascend as clear. And while the weight goes far on my ear, everything false will disappear. Silently now I wait for thee, ready, my God, thy will to see. Open my ears, adore me, Spirit divine. God is with you. Let us pray together. Loving God, we come today seeking to know you, feel your presence, and hear your voice. We also come seeking your love and guidance in these challenging times and changing circumstances. When the future is unknown and some of our daily routines and ways of relating are no longer available, grant us flexibility patience and wisdom. Open us to new possibilities, fill us with hope, and give us compassion for ourselves and others. In Christ's name, amen. And now JC will play the Lord's My Shepherd.
Thank you. Our reading this morning is taken from the Gospel according to John. I'm going to be reading from the message translation of the Bible, a translation written by Eugene Peterson. And so it might be a little different from what you're looking at, but I think it begins to tell the story in a, a way that maybe uh, words that we can hear today, uh, words of the story of a man who was born blind. There's many layers to the story, but one of the pieces that for me is most important around it is that in it, Jesus is teaching about how our, our judgments, our assumptions, um, are looking for cause and effect, uh, aren't the way that God sees us. And so uh, when we read this, we realize that sometimes we hold tight to our biases. And this story seeks to open us up to the transforming power of God's love on all of our prejudices, on all of our blindnesses, so that we can sing, as we will a little later, the song that John Newton wrote, I once was blind but now I see. So reading from the Gospel according to John, chapter 9, verses 1 to 41. Walking down the street, Jesus saw a man blind from birth. His disciples asked, Rabbi, who sinned, this man or his parents, causing him to be born blind? Jesus said, you're asking the wrong question. You're looking for someone to blame. There's no such cause effect here. Look instead for what God can do. We need to be energetically at work for the one who sent me here, working while the sun shines. When night falls, the workday is over. For as long as I am in the world, there is plenty of light. I am the world's light. He said this and then spit in the dust, made a clay paste with the saliva, rubbed the paste on the blind man's eyes and said, go wash at the pool of Siloam. Siloam means sent. The man went and washed and saw. So tell me. Bossing his relatives and those who year after year had seen him as a blind man begging were saying, why, isn't this the man we knew who sat here and begged? Others said, it's him all right. But others objected. It's not the same man at all. It looks like him. He said, it's me, the very one. They said, how did your eyes get opened? A man named Jesus made a paste and rubbed it on my eyes and told me, go to Siloam and wash. I did what he said. When I washed, I saw. So where is he? I don't know. They marched the man to the Pharisees. This day when Jesus made the paste and healed his blindness was the Sabbath. The Pharisees grilled him again on how he had come to see. He said, he put a clay paste on my eyes and I washed and now I see. Some of the Pharisees said, obviously this man can't be from God. He doesn't keep the Sabbath. Others countered, how can a bad man do miraculous God-revealing things like this? There was a split in their ranks. They came back at the blind man. You're the expert. He opened your eyes. What do you say about him? He said, he is a prophet. The Pharisees didn't believe it didn't believe the man was blind to begin with. So they called the parents of the man now bright-eyed with sight. They asked them, is this your son, the one you say was born blind? So how is it that he now sees? His parents said, we know he is our son, and we know he was born blind, but we don't know how he came to see, haven't a clue who opened his eyes. Why don't you ask him? He's a grown man and can speak for himself. His parents were talking like this because they were intimidated by the religious leaders who had already decided that anyone who took a stand that this, that Jesus was the Messiah, would be kicked out of the meeting place, out of the temple, out of the place of the sanctuary where they met. 
That's why his parents said, ask him, he's a grown man. They called the man back a second time, the man who had been blind, and told him, give credit to God, we know this man is an imposter. He replied, I know nothing about that one way or the other, but I know one thing for sure, I was blind, I now see. And they said, well, what did he do to you? How did he open your eyes? I've told you over and over, and you haven't listened. Why? Do you want to hear it again? Are you so eager to become Jesus' disciples? With that, with that, they jumped all over him. You might be a disciple of that man, but we're disciples of Moses. We know for sure that God spoke to Moses, but we have no idea where this man even comes from. The man replied, this is amazing. You claim to know nothing about him, but the fact is, he opened my eyes. It is well known that God isn't at the beck and call of sinners, but listens carefully to anyone who lives in reverence and does his will. That someone opened the eyes of a man born blind has never been heard of, ever. If this man didn't come from God, he wouldn't be able to do anything. They said, you're nothing but dirt. How dare you take that tone with us? Then they threw him out on the street. Jesus heard that they had thrown him out and went and found him. He asked him, do you believe in the Son of Man? The man said, point him out to me, sir, so that I can believe in him. Jesus said, you're looking at him right now. Don't you recognize my voice? Master, I believe, the man said, and worshipped him. Jesus then said, I came into the world to bring everything into the clear light of day, making all the distinctions clear, so that those who have never seen will see, and those who have made a great pretense of seeing will be exposed as blind. Some Pharisees overheard him and said, does this mean you're calling us blind? Jesus said, if you were really blind, you would be blameless. But since you claim to see everything so well, you're accountable for every fault and failure. May we see and worship the God who enlightens us. Amen. Well, good morning, friends. Thank you to Reverend Coral and to the worship team for the invitation to be with you today. When we reserved this date many months ago, none of us knew that this would be the way that we are together. And I'm so grateful for the online ministries, for the people here today that can help us be introduced to one another and still safely connected. So how are you coping with this brave new world that we're living in? Are you finding new ways to lean into God? Are you feeling more anxious and worried? Are you shaking your head at the run on toilet paper? Or are you stocking up? <laughs> Petrified that the stock market crash has decimated savings? Are you someone who works in an industry that has now had to shut down and you've lost your job? Or maybe that's a situation for your children or your grandchildren. I've noticed that some of the assumptions and judgments that I've made in the past, perhaps we've all made in the past, are being thrown right out the window now as we begin to see one another as being in this together because this virus does not exclude anyone from its grip. We search for answers, we're seeking a cause and effect, and dare I say it, maybe some country or someone to blame. We humans are really good at looking for cause and effect. Cause and effect. In fact, it's how our brains are hardwired. The oldest part of our brains are hardwired. You know, it's one of those survival techniques, like don't touch the fire or you're going to get burned. And you learn after you've touched the fire not to touch the fire. Jesus' closest disciples, the people who have 
seen him at work over and over, and the ways that he has turned his society's assumptions and judgments completely upside down, they're still locked in their assumptions and judgments too. And they ask him the question, Rabbi, who sinned, this man or his parents? And they're not alone, are they? I mean, seeking cause and effect, trying to hold on to the assumptions and judgments we have, also extends to the religious leaders who can't fit what has happened to this blind man into the comfortable, rules-oriented box of their own making. Instead, they get locked into the hows and the whos instead of just giving thanks for this miraculous healing that a man who had been born blind has now had his sight restored, and even more than that, has now been restored to community. There's an old expression some of you might know, you know, don't judge a book by its cover. How many times have you found yourself in crisis and the people that you thought that you were going to be able to rely on weren't able to be there for you? And some of the people that you never thought that you could depend on came through for you in so many unexpected ways. Throughout Jesus' life on earth, he showed us a different way of evaluating people, not just looking at the outside appearances, but looking instead deeper, beyond the outside, into the heart of a person, looking at their actions. I don't know about you, but I have to remind myself so often, more than I would like to care to admit, about removing the log in my own eye before I worry about the speck in somebody else's. To do that in the new times that we find ourselves in, I find that I have to limit how much time I watch the news or go on to social media because I can quickly become either very angry or very afraid and anxious, fretting about all the selfishness, the blame game antics that seem so prevalent right now. And that focus on my anger and on my fear and on my anxiety keeps me from seeing the focus I need, the focus to see even blessings, to see God in the midst of even this. Remember what Jesus told those disciples about their assumptions about the man born blind? He said, there is no such cause and effect here. Look instead for what God can do. We need to be energetically at work for the one who sent me here, rather than looking for cause and effect remaining locked in our own biases, assumptions, and judgments. When I focus on my blessings rather than on my judgments, my anger and fear and anxiety subsides, and my gratefulness for all those who are working tirelessly and sacrificially to continue to serve us in hospitals and laboratories, retirement residences and nursing homes, driving ambulances and transits, it rises, my gratitude for all of them rises. And I have to admit that there are people who I really didn't pay that much attention to before, beyond, hi, how's your day going? Who I now see and appreciate in a whole new way. Who knew that the local grocery store clerk, cashier, and the stock shelfers would be among some of the most essential people we are relying on right now. Friends, this focus on blessings, on God in the midst of even this, isn't naive about this crisis, but leaning into God reminds me where to keep my focus. And some of you might have seen the recent movie or maybe grew up on, on Mr. Rogers and where he said, like, even in the times of emergency and crisis, look for the helpers. And I think this story that we hear this morning from John's Gospel, this story of healing and restoration, is Jesus' way of saying, even when we get lost in our assumptions and biases and judgments, look for God. Focus on what God is doing in the midst of everything. There's a couple that I've read about who are in British Columbia, who when they realized that they might be in quarantine for a few months, went to their local grocery store at the end of the day and bought out the entire, the entire meat counter. 
Now you can't live in a small town <laughs> and get away with that. And someone posted about it online, on, and then some social media site got a hold of it, and the next thing you know, it goes viral, and this couple actually began to receive death threats. They tried to explain that they themselves had just got caught up in all the anxiety and the fear generated by the pictures of empty store shelves, and they intended to share the meat with their family and not resell it as a profit or anything like that. They even made a donation of $1,000 to their local food bank to demonstrate that they weren't bad people. They just got scared. Their fear initially led them to act in a way that was seemingly self-serving. But when we look beyond that cover, we see people who have a good heart, whose subsequent actions should give us all pause to reevaluate to not judge a book or this family by its cover. If this coronavirus pandemic is teaching us anything, I hope it's encouraging us to let go of those assumptions and judgments and biases that keep our blinders on to the people and situations around us. For those of us who call ourselves people of faith, followers of Jesus, I also wonder what more I, we, can do. Now that most of us are shut-ins, maybe it's time to just stop thinking of the elderly as the shut-ins. Most of us have phones. Why not reach out and touch someone safely? <laughs> older connecting with younger, younger with older, and everything in between. Imagine what a month or more or whatever it will be of this kind of connection, what it will do to the fabric of this community, of all of us. I think one of the best things that we can do is found in this story of Jesus' healing of the man born blind. I love that the message translation used the word energetically. Some of you will know that I did my Reiki training with Reverend Coral many years ago, and I kept thinking, what would the energy of our lives, our community, our world look like if we all set aside a time through the day to join in prayer together. Maybe it would be online. Maybe it would just be setting an alarm like for 11 o'clock in the morning. Wherever we are, we would stop whatever else we were doing and lean into the one who is still at work, even when we can't necessarily see it. Leaning into God in prayer, the one who's giving us strength and courage to go through this crisis, who's giving that strength and courage to those who are still crossing the thresholds of hospitals, even without the masks and protective gear that they need so that they can care for each one of us who end up there. God who encourages the cashier in your local grocery store to remain calm even when facing angry customers. Lean into God whose spirit hovered over the chaos of creation and uttered light and love and life into this world, who is here with us today, who was here with us yesterday, and who is here with us for all eternity. God who sees us even in our suffering and pain and never hesitates to enter in, looking at us with the eyes of grace and love that will never let us go. <laughs> what would the fabric, the energy of our world look like if we did that? Could we be a part of letting go of our fear and be transformed by God's love to be people of hope? Could we let go of our loneliness? and find all of the ways that we have to still connect? Will we see that we're all in this together and so let, let go of those assumptions and judgments and biases that too often has led us to exclude some while only including others? What will happen to the fabric of our lives, our communities, our world, if we would just take the time together to pray to the one who is in the midst.
Friends, I don't know what the world will look like a month from now. What I do know is, is that if we can come together, discover our common humanity, and lean into the presence and peace of God that is among us, some of those biases, assumptions, and judgments that have shaped our thinking this far will be changed. Perhaps our eyes will be opened enough to be able to see each one in the way that Christ sees us all. We have an opportunity to connect in a new, actually very old way, the one that Jesus the Good Shepherd showed us as he healed the man born blind. I came across this quote from Meister Eckhart, 13th century mystic and theologian, who said, in our fear and shame, we see only a long and lonely darkness. In your love, O oh Lord, you see even this as a place waiting to be born in the radiance of love. Friends, the world is waiting this time to be born in the radiance of love. Will you, will I be a part of that? I pray that it would be so. Blessings to God. Amen. Thank you. Thank you so much, Reverend Denny. And we're going to join in singing Amazing Grace. of new life. Thank you for this story of Jesus healing a man born blind to assure us that you see our need. Search us out and find us and change our lives by your amazing grace. Liberating God, free us to embrace new possibilities and open us to the movement of your spirit. Fill us with your breath of life, your healing touch, and your infinite love. Grant us sight and insight beyond our own understanding 
and renew our hope in the future. We now turn our attention to the world in the midst of a pandemic. Thank you for doctors, nurses, health professionals, all who are working together to treat hundreds of thousands of people with the virus and testing others to ensure they receive the care they need and to stop the spread. Grant them compassion, strength, and stamina as they seek to serve the growing numbers in need and be a healing presence in the lives of those who are ill. Our hearts break with those who are grieving and those who are fearful. Grant them comfort and kindness and your gift of peace. We also pray for businesses in jeopardy and people forced to close and the thousands who have been laid off work without income and bills coming in. Thank you for a compassionate government who is doing all they can to fill the gap and provide support. We also thank you for all who are working overtime to stock and staff grocery stores and pharmacies, to sanitize all we touch, and for innovative companies, from alcohol distilleries to automotive assembly plants, who are retooling to meet changing needs. And now we extend our compassion to those who are locked down in seniors' residences and long-term care homes, and those in our own circle of family and friends in need of a special blessing, who we now name in the silence of our hearts. God, thank you for the energy of love and the power of prayer. Thank you for all who send cards, make phone calls, and express their kindness. May we be your loving heart and hands and listening ears. And now we ask for your wisdom, joy, and lightness of spirit that comes with knowing we are not alone. May your love enlighten and enliven our whole being. We ask this in the name of Jesus, who gave us the Lord's Prayer that we join in saying together. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. And we have our closing hymn, a hymn of hope and uh, trust in God, Voices United 424, may the God of hope go with us.
end of our service time together. Just a, a word of gratefulness again for JC and Andrew and Bill and Reverend Coral and for the technology that allows us to be here together. It really has been my pleasure. Uh, just want to invite you to look at those words of that song that we just sang, those last one. May the God of healing free the earth from fear, freeing us for peace, both treasured and pursued. May the God of love keep our commitment clear to a world restored, to human life renewed. None of us knows what's going to happen this week in our world, in our lives, in our communities. But let us go with this focus. We go in place or to the grocery store or where we need. We go with God, who has loved us from the beginning with a love that will never let us go. We walk with Jesus, who has shown us the power of love, not just in the good times, but in the pain and suffering of life. And we go with the Spirit, who dwells within and moves with among us, bringing us hope, encouragement, eyes open to share Christ's love. Let us go in peace. And may the love of God hold you, may the life of Christ uphold you, and may the Holy Spirit link us as one. And we join in our prayer of dedication, and if you have the liturgy, sing with us. I won't destroy it, but enjoy the gift of music. 